Welcome. So you may notice that there's a monitoring process that's going on, an evaluative process within your own experience I'm talking about. So as always, this is only valuable if you look for yourself. So this is an invitation for you to look for yourself. So look right now and notice this process that's evaluating, judging, criticizing, critiquing, assessing. It's constantly going, this is good, this is bad. I like it, I don't like it. I'm succeeding, I'm failing. It's constantly evaluating. So this is important to see, because if you don't see it, then the same habit of identification continues. So there's a kind of bondage to this evaluation system or really more to whatever the evaluation is. So you notice that in your life there's up, there's down. When there's up, you're up. When there's down, you're down. And then there's up again and you're up and then there's down and then you're down. So it's tremendously unsteady. Now we can go to war with it. You can try and defeat it. But the problem with that is it doesn't work. So the good news is that we don't have to do that. That's a strategy. And here we can give up the strategies. It's not to get rid of the strategies. It's just to give them up just for this moment. But to give them up, we have to see them. We have to see what's happening. We have to see everything in order for there to be a, this ability to give up. So you might notice that in your life, you've attempted to use your willpower to succeed, to overcome, to achieve and so forth. And it only takes you so far, it has a limit. And once you hit that limit, then there you are. And no matter how many times you do that, you reach that limit, the limit may be a little further along, a little less further along, but no matter where that limit is, there's a limit and it's ultimately dissatisfying. So that limit is because it's just the nature of the uh, experience. It's the nature of the phenomena to have limits. That's why we can differentiate. That's why we say, I'm here, you're there. This is my 
left hand, this is my right hand. It's how we can differentiate between an apple and an orange because there's a limit, there's some boundary, there's a definition, there's some, it's differentiated, it's this, it's not that. So that's its nature. So this evaluation process, this mechanism that's constantly evaluating, judging, it's a, like a navigation system. And if we're fighting with it, then we're uh, fighting with nature because it's what nature is made. It's an expression of nature. So you might as well be fighting with gravity. Good luck. So this, on the face of it, sounds bad, maybe. Bad news. Okay. Well, maybe on the face of it, it just sounds like nonsense, actually. But if you start to actually look and see what's being pointed to, you start to notice, if you're sincere, you look right now, you see, yes, I'm constantly on this roller coaster, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. It's exhausting. It's nauseating. And I've been fighting with it. I've been struggling to just keep it up. You know, every day, why won't you just stay up? What's wrong with you? <laughs> Today's going to be different. I'm going to be victorious today. Keep it up forever and ever and ever. Which is just devastating, really. So if you feel exhausted, hopeless, frustrated, some variation on that theme, then it's good news, you're in the right place. Because most other places that you go, they're going to tell you, just try harder. Here's another way. You just do this instead. But it's all fighting with nature. It's all you versus nature, or you versus reality, or you versus life, or you versus the whatever. It's you versus. There's a you, and you're the one who needs to be up all the time, can't let yourself sink down. So here, the invitation is to just look. So look right now and see what's being pointed to. Notice, yes, I'm struggling. Yes, I'm constantly listening to this narration. It's good. It's not good. I like it. I don't like it. This I can trust this. I can't trust this. I should do this. I should not do that. Constantly listening to that. Constantly struggling with that. Constantly at war with that. But it's like, an addiction, you're, you're at war, but you can't stop because you're so identified with it. You don't know what else you would be without that. Well, if I gave that up, then I would, then I'd just sink down and I'd be depressed and angry and lonely and hopeless. And it would just be awful. And so you see, we were so tightly identified with that, that we can't even see beyond it until we do. So here the possibility is to see beyond it or to see before it. So just notice right now, this up and down, the evaluation, the, all of that, the good and bad, the like it, don't like it, the winning and losing and everything. Notice ultimately it's dissatisfying, it's hollow. It won't really give you what you actually want. It's not hard to see. You just have to, just for one instant, just for one instant, be willing just to see. It's like 
all the effort is in not seeing. Here it is right in front of you. And so much effort goes into looking everywhere else and ignoring it. I don't, what are you talking about? I don't see it. I don't see anything. I don't see it. What are you talking about? I don't know what you're talking about. I don't see it. I'm looking. I don't see it, though. You see how much effort that requires. But all along, you know it. There's something in you that knows. It says, give it up. It's so hard what you're doing. It's so exhausting. It's such a struggle. It requires so much effort, so much strain. And course you're afraid because that's just the nature of it but even though you're afraid even though the fear is here and even if you think you already know the answer and even if you think you've already done it and whatever may be happening just for one instant now just stop, just stop making the effort. Just let this moment continue. So the stopping is not a one-time thing. You don't stop and then you get the answer and then hallelujah. That's what we've been taught. That's what we thought we understood. You notice anything other than that we have resistance to? You notice that? Some voice that says, wait a second. Wait a second. If it's not a, just stop once and then I get the answer and then hallelujah, then, well, that sounds like that's not going to be what I want. That sounds like that's going to be hard. That sounds like that's going to be painful. And that's what keeps this whole thing going. So don't one moment now just don't go to war with that but just don't entertain it just be willing to stop anyway see that's the you stop and then that comes along and it says start it up again it starts poking at you oh you think you're so smart well here how about this one let's see if we can provoke you with this one and then it starts bringing out all the things that will it knows will get your attention what about this but what about that but just stop. you see this is why the stopping is not a one-time thing it's it's a living process and far from being what we think it is we think it's going to be, oh, some sort of drudgery. What do you mean I have to just keep stopping? Oh, oh. no, it's, it's, a, it's the ecstasy of stopping. When this is finally seen, then there's a shift. Now, don't misunderstand that because then you get right back to where you were and you think, oh, that's what he's talking. Now he's admitting. Then you get somewhere and then the stopping is done. And it's, you, you know, you've attained the goal and you can just rest on your laurels. No, it's just that in this process, it is a process. It's an unfolding. There's a, there are, let's say, thresholds like any learning. It's not so different from any learning. It's just, it's just that this is a learning on a different track. Same 
meta learning process applies, but it's just on a different track. So it looks different on the surface, but underneath that, same basic principles apply, which is you have to have the correct expectation. If you have the wrong expectation, you know with any learning, you have the wrong expectation, you will never achieve mastery. If you go into anything, you say, I should master this today. It's not gonna happen. Well, this is the lie that we've been sold and that we've bought in, in this domain, in this domain, whatever we want to call it, if we want to call it a spiritual domain or whatever, that it doesn't matter. But we've heard these stories where there's some flash and then forevermore, you know, it's like Saul is on the road to Damascus and, and then all of a sudden, you know, vision of Jesus or the presence of Jesus and then he becomes Paul and forevermore he's saved well there's a lot of detail that's left out I'm certain it wasn't that simple So having the proper expectation, which we could say is really just about maturity, is extremely helpful. And you see, then what happens, you say, all this other conditioning is provoked. Oh, you know, the, the regret. Oh, I've wasted so many years. Oh, I'm starting so late. Oh, this, so oh, that. But actually it's all just in ignorance so just be willing to just stop again now i understand at least for some people this suggestion or whatever you want to call it to stop the invitation to stop is not clear. So that's part of the learning process. See, we're learning how to stop. So again, you have to come back to understanding that this is a learning process. If you insist that it all has to be known to you in perfect crystal clarity and that you have to have mastery now it's it's ignorance it's a misunderstanding of the gift of what's available it's because what's available is not and you've heard this before but hear it with fresh ears it's not a thing it's not some object that you're going to possess. And notice how that's the same as any learning. It's not an object that you possess. It's not that you know the, you don't have mastery because you know the correct answer. You look in your own life where you have mastery of something. And you might say, I don't have mastery of anything. Well, nonsense. You have mastery of many things. You will maybe overlook them, but many things. I mean, you know, you know how to brush your teeth. You might think that's funny, but you know, if anybody who has had young children, you know, it's not such a simple thing to learn. Okay. So you have mastery over many things. You know how to put a fork to your mouth and do it successfully without jabbing yourself. Okay. So many things that you have mastery over big and small. It's not about the right answer. See how that's true? It's not about the right answer. It's a living experience. It's a living process. It's a living knowledge, not a 
dead knowledge. A dead knowledge would be the right answer that could be written in a book. And how many books are there that have the right answer, but you've read them and they haven't done you any good, really? Because the right answer that can be written in a book is not the living knowledge. The living knowledge is alive, as the name suggests. And for it to be alive, it's not a thing. We can say it's a spirit. But that maybe also makes it seem like it's a thing. You see, there's no way we can really get around that. No matter how we try to describe it, we still come back around to, but it must be a thing. It's just a, an ethereal thing. But no, it's not a thing at, at all. But we, have, we all have the experience of it. You see, that's what I'm pointing to. In many domains of our life, we have the experience of the living knowledge. That's not a thing. It's not something that we can pass down to somebody just by writing it in a book. It's not about memorization. It's not about knowing the right words. It's living. So how, now look in your life, how do you have this living knowledge or maybe that's not the right way to say it because we don't really have it, but how does that living knowledge express? How do we experience the living knowledge? What is that experience of the living knowledge? whether it's brushing your teeth or whatever it may be. What is that? You have to look for yourself and just see in your own experience, what is that? How did that come about? Well, I can assure you, it didn't come about because you said, I already know. And it didn't come about because you said, this is stupid, I'm not gonna bother. And it didn't come about because you said, uh, it's too complicated. I, I can't do it. Then, you know, so many ways it didn't come about. So many ways that for most of us that it was actually hindered. So the ways that it didn't come about, the ways that it was hindered are the ways that had to be seen through, had to be released, had to be navigated around. So like here, okay, here's this, you know, here within me, I noticed this arrogance, this pride, this resistance, this fear, anxiety, all these things that get in the way. I'm just talking about mundane at this point see just in the like learning to ride a bicycle some people are good learners some people like me not so much you know they say blame everybody else blame gravity blame the bicycle you know it's the bicycle's fault it's your fault you're not teaching me right you're doing it wrong. You let go at the wrong time. It's all your fault. You're holding it the wrong way. You're telling me the wrong way, you know? But whatever the specific details of the things that are in the way, you just have to see them for yourself. Now, this is the part that we don't like to do. We, this is why we go looking, you know, this teaching, that teaching, this book, that book, this practice, that practice, because we naively hold out the hope that it's about some external thing. It's not to say that there might not be better or worse things out there, but, but ultimately anything that's truthful has to lead us to this because it's about uh, learning and that learning is a, is a living knowledge and that living knowledge is already existent. already existent. So it's not something that we have to generate. It already exists. So this is uh, why humility is so important. Because if we can't allow for humility, then we just get in our own way over and over and over and over and over. Insisting, well, I 
I'm the, I'm the greatest. I'm the one. I'm, it's all about me. I'm discovering it. I'm going to be the enlightened one, which is to totally miss the point. What does it mean to be enlightened? It means you, know, you are not that. You are not the source of the light. Rather, the light is the source of you. It is to be clear of the obstructions so that the light can shine through. It's not your light. The light is shining through you. So how do those, how are those obstructions cleared? Again, it's through honesty. It's through looking. It's through the willingness just to be present to your own experience and see here are all the habits that get in the way every time that this thing surfaces here's the various strategies that i employ so that i can reject it deny it ignore it again back to you know it's not me it's the bicycle bicycles the broken the bicycles the thing that's not working and i gotta go get a different bicycle and you spend a whole lifetime get, seeking for the perfect bicycle but you never notice that what's getting in the way is actually you so so here actually it's the easiest thing it's the simplest thing it's just to be so you just allow yourself right now to notice that you are. And then notice everything that arises that seems to be interfering with the free and full expression of being. So notice here right now, being without having to know what that is in advance. It's not something that you have to have the right answer. It's a direct revelation. So it's not already known. It already is, but it's not already known. So you just notice it without having to know it. And then notice what seems to interfere with the free and full expression of that. Now, again, you might not be clear on what on earth I'm even talking about, and that's okay. It's a learning process. So wherever you are, whatever your experience is, is perfect because it reveals to you exactly, exactly what it is that needs to be seen. Now, what are some of the things that you, kinds of things that you might notice? Well, you might notice thoughts. You might notice sensations. You might notice any kind of sensory uh, perception. You might notice emotion. And you might just notice any kind of phenomena that you aren't sure how to classify, really. So you see, everything is included. And I often describe it as a uneasiness or a discomfort. So doesn't have to be, you don't have to perceive it that way, but uh, if you perceive uneasiness or discomfort, that's excellent. The reason I say that is because that uneasiness or discomfort is what we mostly seek to avoid. So you start to notice that that's what this evaluation system is constantly trying to navigate how do i how do i just avoid that discomfort and just get the pleasant experience 
but ultimately that's all dissatisfying as I pointed out and it's uh, misses the point. As so many have told us in so many ways, but you know, know thyself. It's not actually this, this word enlightenment is not, I don't know where that word came from, but I don't think that's the traditional way of describing this. It's self-knowledge, self-realization. So nobody's talking, I mean, nobody who's an authentic master is saying the, the goal is self-glorification or the goal is uh, to have the most pleasure. I mean, you, there's no reason necessarily why we should think it's not. I mean, sounds good on the surface, right? Yeah, the most pleasure, that sounds great. I'm, I'll, I'm in for that. But that's not what we're told. And if we're, so here, you know, th there is a time and a place maybe for innovation. But if you're wanting to ride a bicycle first, before you innovate, maybe just learn the basics. Find out all these people who have ridden bicycles and who are riding bicycles, what maybe they can share with you about this and be willing to trust what they have to say because your notions are maybe not helpful. Same here, again, you see, I'm, I'm trying to make this connection that we have uh, this self-knowledge is, it's a different track in a sense than m most knowledge, but the same basic learning process applies if you try to insist that you already know the answer when you don't. Well, you already know what the result of that is. That's just the more of this back to uh, blaming the bicycle and blaming the teacher I and mean, everything else is at fault, but it's not, not me and my ignorance and my ideas that I'm gripping to. So we have to be willing to be humble and, and really listen to what it is that is being said by those who know, by those who experience, by those who have the uh, direct knowledge that they can share. So again, what do they say? They say it's know thyself, self-realization, self-knowledge. So now the only thing about this that we could say is slightly cryptic is what is the self that they're referring to? But this is part of the learning process, you see, because that's what's being pointed to. They say, know thyself. And on the face of it, we say, I know myself. I know everything about me. Who are you to suggest I should know myself? You don't know about me, you see. And it's true that the, if we're talking about the mind, if we're talking about the story of the personality, nobody knows better than the mind does. The mind is that warehouse of all of those things. So of course it knows, nobody else knows, only the mind knows, but
then this should invite curiosity. Well, who, you know, if, on the on the surface, this seems a ludicrous statement. Know thyself. I already know myself. So then it should invite us to look a little bit more deeply. And in order to look more deeply, we have to be willing to let go of whatever it is that we hold on to that keeps us at the surface. So now, again, just notice whatever it is that's happening as you just in this moment, open yourself to this learning process. So the invitation is just be. And then notice whatever it is that that provokes, which could be thoughts, feelings, emotions, sensations, or whatever else, anything. And what you're seeing as you see these things is everything that has you've habitually clung to that keeps you on the surface. So it's like you're you're on the you're swimming in the lake and you've got all your floaties. And that's all these things. And you're terrified to let go of them because, well, you don't know what's under there, but you're afraid, you know, it's, there's some sense in you that to go under will mean death. And it's sort of true, but it's an inversion. Actually, if you look and see, you don't know really what life is see life what we call life which is just floating on the surface clinging to all the flotation devices it's not really worth calling life is it it's not really well you know the truth of life you know that the actual truth of life i mean in your heart of hearts you know that the actual truth of life is something glorious what we call life, which is really just getting by, is not, is not the same thing. So this is where we find ourselves stuck because we're afraid to let go. We're afraid to encounter what we're, what we're terrified is going to destroy us. Well, this is like, no, I, I might be a little silly. I don't know. I don't know what things, you know, what the actual state of things was, but they say that in the, you know, hundreds of years ago, the state of the st state of the art knowledge of geography in Europe was that the world is flat and that there were, there's an edge there and there's monsters and you sail too far and they'll eat you up. That'll be the end of you. I don't know if that's true or not, but that that's what they say. There's maps that have the pictures of the monsters there and everything so it's a good story though so we can understand that you know there's a that's the that's the worldly knowledge the worldly knowledge tells us don't let don't let go just stay here with us on the surface just keep treading water just keep holding on to your flotation devices But you looking around and you're seeing, boy, there's an awful lot of unhappy people, dissatisfied people here clinging to their flotation devices. Hey, hey, is there anybody out there who's happy? No. But there's a pull from below. When you call that, is there anybody out there who's happy? You feel it pulling you from below. And at once, there's a sense of exhilaration and terror. 
because here you discover there's another dimension. There's another, it's not just out here on the surface. There's, oh, there's a whole other dimension that I have not been considering. And then, oh, 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 that dimension. There's a reason I haven't considered that dimension because that dimension is down there and that's terrifying. And again, that tug, that pull. Here's faint happiness down here. And it goes against everything you've ever imagined. What do you mean happiness down there? Down there, that's where all the bad stuff is. That's where all the bad, difficult things bubble up from. Fear, anger, resentment, pain, misery, suffering, regret, shame. That's right. So the only way to find out, like the only way to find out if the world is flat or not, you've got to be willing to go. And, you know, to be willing to find out if the world is flat, you've got to be willing to venture very far from the land. So to be willing to find out what's there in the depths and if there is actual satisfaction and if there is actual life that's worthy of the name, you've got to be willing to risk it, which is the invitation always right now. So whatever you find, whatever is bubbling up, you just trace that back to its source. Let it bring you and find out what's really here. So it's to be very, very, very still. To make no effort at all. And you see how still that stillness is because obviously there's, you see all this movement happening, so much movement, body's moving, mind is moving, feelings are moving. And you, and you think, oh I've, oh, I've screwed it up. Oh, I'm doing it again. Oh, I'm doing it again. So now see what's the stillness is being pointed to. It's beyond that, that's superficial. So you have to now, every time you notice the movement and then you notice the judgment of the movement and you notice the reaction to the judgment to the movement, you have to just see that there's a stillness that's undisturbed by all of that. And that stillness is you, it's right here. Regardless of the ups and downs, regardless of what the assessment is, you start to see how actually completely unreliable and in a sense useless, at least for this kind of learning, this assessment mechanism is because it's only drawing upon the dead knowledge. It's only drawing upon the knowledge that came from the past. It's not a living knowledge. So the living knowledge is here in the depths. The living knowledge is in the stillness. And in order to receive that living knowledge, we have to go to it. We have to allow ourselves to become like it. And again, that's not about controlling or manipulating the surface. The, move, the surface is still rippling. The agitation is still there. So it's not about making the surface like the depths. It's about you being the depths. So you just see everything that's happening 
and notice the tendency to latch on to it, to latch on to the agitation, to go to war with it, to try and fix it, to blame it, to shame it. If only, if only I wasn't feeling agitated, if only my body was feeling better, if only my mind wasn't so distraught, then I would be okay. That's an excuse. So then perhaps as you allow yourself to be the depths, to sink to the depths, to know the depths, to learn from the depths, to receive from the depths, to be moved by the depths, then what starts to happen is you're just more and more, you might feel yourself just pulled into the depths. And if you allow yourself, you just find yourself here effortlessly. And all of these little bubbles are forming and rising, all the very subtle movements, but here you just rest at the depths, as the depths. So that even these bubbles, these subtle movements and whatever agitation may be on the surface is actually unimportant to you. Un it doesn't disturb you in the least. Now I'm not suggesting the mind is not disturbed. The mind might be very disturbed because the conditioning that exists presently in the mind may be still this very unpleasant conditioning. So there may be great agitation, panic, fear, worry, anxiety, distress, so many things, jealousy, frustration, anger, resentment, all of that may be going on. So many things may be there, but just here in the depths, is it of any concern? And you can see, no, it's no concern. Not from here, from there, it's a great concern, of course, because the mind is going all over the place. It's distraught. So yes, at that level, you go back to the surface and you'll find you're very agitated. But here in the depths, all is well, as long as you remain in the depths. So now we can, we have several options. One is just remain here in the depths, which is great so long as you can do it. Challenging when you have interpersonal conflicts and uh, bills that are needing to be paid and other things going on. So. Then the question is, how can we how can we know the depths and allow the depths to express fully and freely at all levels? Because surely it can't be that only the depths can be true peace and at the surface, it must always be hell. Can't be. So now we can just navigate from the depths to the surface. So first we go from the surface to the depths and then we explore from the depths to the surface. And it's the same basic process. It's just to see whatever is there. But now as we're traveling in this reverse direction, we're, you know, we are 
gently nudging creation, opening up pathways. So the basis is always here at the depths. This is this formless awareness, this vast open supreme reality, the basis of everything. You can notice that this is so because here you can watch and see that everything is coming from here and resolving here. So this is the basis. This is uh, the essential realization. Without this, if you skip ahead, you shortchange yourself. So this has to be the basis, the foundation. From here, and anchored here, it's like we place an anchor here and then we allow ourselves to slowly begin to explore through the uh, various levels of expression, we start to discover where the peace, this unconditional peace at the ground of being becomes distorted into something that appears other than that at the surface. And we can bring, we can shine that light of awareness in a very focused and specific way to help dissolve specific obstacles just with an intention. So if we have the intention, as I often invite us to explore, to imagine this possibility of unconditional peace, this unconditional peace that we find here at the ground of being, expressing fully and freely at all levels of our existence, in our minds and in our bodies and in our relationships and in our homes and in our communities, then you start to just notice where the objections are, where you have difficulty actually imagining that possibility is being realized and manifest because of whatever obstacle may be there. It may be a feeling, it may be a belief, it may be an image, it may be a memory, it may be something that you can't quite categorize, but whatever it is, you just notice it and just see that in this light of non-judgmental awareness. So here we're not trying to fix it or change it or anything. Rather, we're just wanting to see it. Just see, that's, that's the habit. But by seeing, new possibilities open up, new possibilities for the full and free expression of that deeper reality. So one more time, just allow yourself to sink to that depth, the ultimate depth, just letting go, just being. And notice here, as you just allow and surrender everything, that it's really formless, boundless, and that you are here. This is actually the heart of who you are. It's beyond any idea. So this, we're not talking about your personality or your body. We're talking about who you actually know yourself to be prior to any of that. And it's formless and it's infinite and it's here. And then again, you just anchor yourself here so that you recognize this is actually the truth of who I am at the heart. And then allow yourself to envision this possibility of this unconditional peace that you find here, expressing fully and freely in your mind, in your body, in your relationships, in your home, and in your community. 
and just notice whatever objections, whatever obstacles seem to be there and just allow yourself to see them without fighting with them, without arguing with them, without defending them, without doing anything. Just see them. And if you have judgments or if there are if there is defensiveness that arises or whatever, then you just see that too. That's fine. It's not about being perfect. It's just about seeing. And you notice that in this seeing, this non-judgmental seeing, this allowing to the very best of your ability without it having to be perfect, just notice that something does change, it has to change. I don't mean it has to be something enormous. It's just an opening, just some new freshness, some new possibility, some little glimmer, something where there was some ignorance that has been dissolved in the light of awareness by this living knowledge. See, it's where the dead knowledge is revealed to be slightly off by the shining forth of the living knowledge. So naturally we just surrender whatever is false when it's illumined in the light of this living knowledge. And it's not something we have to understand with the mind. It's just a holistic process. It's just a opening. So you may notice it, you may not notice it. If you notice it particularly, then just acknowledge that and just have gratitude for that. You don't have to make anything else of it. You don't have to do anything with it. Just acknowledge that. So as always, thank you for joining me. Thank you for your courage. Thank you for your willingness. And uh, for those who are here live, we'll stay on for the Q&A. So let me end this recording.